Hi-o! Welcome to my channel. My name is Greta and I make BSL Libre videos, sign by sign tutorials and chronic illness related content. As you can see, I'm outside, so I'm not sure how the audio will be. And also, hopefully I don't mess up too many times so the light doesn't change as much by the end of the video. I have recently started my first proper grown-up full-time job and I wish I had someone in similar shoes telling me what to expect and how to get the best out of the first few days, weeks and months. So, in this video I will share the top 3 do's and the top 3 don'ts that I have learned during my first 3 months and all of these are useful regardless of your conditions. If you want to read more about how my first few weeks with hot, chronic migraines, fibromyalgia and complex PTSD were like, follow the link in the description below to the piece I've done for the Rare Youth Revolution and check out their other content as well. But now, let's get started. Do write a list of all the reasonable adjustments you need with or without a diagnosis. Did you know that in the UK it is a legal requirement for your employer to meet reasonable adjustments to all employees regardless of the severity of their conditions or the nature of their impairments and it doesn't matter whether you're a trainee, an apprentice, a full or a part-time employee it applies to all of you out there. It is your right with or without a sign, lift and stem diagnosis to get the support that you need and deserve. Please do think of any adjustments you found useful or would have found useful during your education or in previous roles. If you are unsure what support is out there, do ask the occupational health team or relevant bodies so that they can tell you what helped people in similar situations. Also, websites like the British government do provide some examples of reasonable adjustments. This includes changing the recruitment process, doing things in another way. For example, I was allowed to take my water bottle into the strictly no food, no drinks laboratory I used to work in. It was making my life so much easier and my job much more manageable. Another example is making physical changes to the workplace, like installing a ramp for a wheelchair user or an audiovisual fire alarm for a deaf person. A reasonable adjustment could just be something like letting an employee work in a different location like the ground floor of the building or from home. Other changes include for example change to equipment, do check out the government website for more and there are many other websites that can help you get some ideas. I talked to my line manager even before I started I found the leaflet for employers prepared by POTS UK extremely useful as a conversation starter. Most disorder specific organisations do prepare for employees leaflets that you can download and they are especially handy if you're not that comfortable talking about your disabilities and your needs. Which then links me to my next point which is don't minimize your needs to be less of a burden. It is hard, I'm still not good at it and chances are that if my line manager is watching this they'll probably bring it up but hey <laughs> thanks for watching this far though. I have never been one to ask for help and that often causes more damage to me in the long run. Just ask my husband. <laughs> It took a retinal detachment and an emergency eye surgery for me to accept any help from him. The thing is, if you cannot bring your best performance without reasonable adjustments, then it is both in your and your employer's interest to get those adjustments in place. Do know what the government can offer. As I mentioned earlier, the UK government offers a wide range of examples of reasonable adjustments that could be implemented for employees. But that is not all. If you live in another country and you're not interested in this point, just follow this timestamp uh, so that you can jump to the next, the next section instead. 
The access to work scheme is available to all outside of the civil service because civil service have the same support but within the department. It does not matter how much you earn as this scheme is there to level the playing field similarly to the personal independence payment. Access to work covers things beyond the reasonable adjustments because that is something that your employer is legally responsible for. And you can apply for a grant to help you pay for practical support with your work, support with managing your mental health at work and money to pay towards communication support for job interviews. That is all great, isn't it? What do they actually cover? Practical support can be covering costs needed to adjust a vehicle to allow you to get to work or pay for taxes. And it also includes PSL interpreters among other things. Mental health support can mean a personalised plan to either return to or stay in work and it could also mean one-to-one -one sessions with a mental health professional. Communication support for job interviews is not just what you might immediately think of. It also covers assistance needed due to learning disabilities or mental health conditions. I know what you're thinking. This is amazing but am I eligible? You are eligible if you have a physical or mental health condition or disability that means that you need support to do your job or to get to and from work and you are 16 or over and you are either in paid work or about to start slash return to paid work in the next 12 weeks and live and work or about to start slash return to work in England, Scotland or Wales. There is a different system for Northern Ireland to which I put the link in the description down below and if you are interested in more information regarding the criteria follow the relevant link in the description as well. Don't delay applications for the right adjustments. If you are anything like me, you might feel awkward about the idea of bringing all this up on your first day because this Good morning, I'm Greta. I'm looking forward to working with you. Well, here is the list of everything I need to function and to be able to work like a happy person. Cheers! Is not my idea of the best first day at work. But the sooner you start putting everything in place, the sooner you can be at your best performance, which is in everybody's. And trust me, it is a lot. Of paperwork so you want to get started as soon as possible do listen to your body and be patient all conditions and disabilities are different and affect each and every person in a different way but as someone with fluctuating chronic illnesses I find it frustrating when it interferes with my work I actually find it harder to cope with my house impact on my professional life than on my personal life maybe it has something to do with the constant worry of disappointing people or worse, letting them down. Would I be disappointed or let down by someone if they were in the exact same position? Of course not. But that is not the point of anxiety now, is it? I will be making some videos more specific to the conditions I have, which are POTS, fibromyalgia, migraines and complex PTSD so keep an eye out for those especially if you have conditions like that or get in touch about what you find useful with other conditions and last but not least do not put up with ableism at work many disabled and or chronically ill people are more loyal than healthy employees as they often struggle to get a job in the first place therefore they often feel overly grateful for anyone giving them an opportunity to work even if their employer is an ableist piece of strawberry i know it's easier said than done it definitely did not help me when people told me that you don't want to work for someone who would discriminate you for being disabled. While I was ugly crying on a daily basis for being discriminated against for being disabled over and over and over and over again. But it was worth the wait as now I am working in one of the most inclusive workplaces one can dream of. If they don't treat you well, do not feel guilty for looking for another job. 
you don't owe them anything, they did not do you a favor by employing you. So these are my top tips for starting a job with a chronic illness or a disability regardless of the nature of your conditions. I am gathering my more condition specific tips and tricks so make sure you hit the subscribe button down below to see future videos as soon as they are released. Do you have any other tips? What other systems are in place either within the UK or in your country? Share it with me and fellow viewers in the comment section down below or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at mokidoki99. Why don't you share this video with friends, family or colleagues that might be interested. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. Bye.